Welcome to the very first episode of the official podcast of the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare's Tobacco Free Youth Campaign 2.0. I'm thrilled to kickstart this very important conversation that is aimed at raising awareness, inspiring change, and empowering young people to live healthier, smoke free lives. To set the tone, we are honored to have a very special guest on the show today. He is one of the most renowned names in the medical fraternity and with his experience and leadership in healthcare, he is going to tell us the real impact of tobacco use and what we can do to protect ourselves from its harmful effects. This is a conversation you don't want to miss. Please help me welcome the Director of All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, Dr. M. Srinivas. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. One of the things I wanted to ask you is, what is the most common impact you see of tobacco use in your experience? See, at All India Institute of Medical Sciences, we cater to a large number of population, you know. In a day, we get almost 15,000 patients per day. And a significant number, which is increasing over a period of time, is the addictions, addictions to the various uh, substances. And the tobacco is uh, uh, definitely is the most important thing for us because uh, the effects of the tobacco are on uh, every part of the body. You know, you name it, whether it is uh, lung, whether it is the heart, whether it is the gastrointestinal tract, whether it is the uh, endocrine systems, whether it is the brain, and to the fetus also, from the mother to the fetus, uh, every organ is affected by the tobacco. It's not only the smoke, but also the nicotine, which is responsible for that. For example, uh, the most important thing what we see is the uh, lung issues, the, the lung diseases like uh, obstructive pulmonary diseases, you know, COPD, what we say. And uh, at the heart, you know that, you know, uh, tobacco is responsible for the ischemic heart diseases, the so-called heart attacks, which we get, coronary artery disease, because there's a spasm and the uh, blood supply gets reduced. Then you have the most important thing what we see in the various advertisements, you know, tobacco causes cancers, you know. If you ask me, the tobacco causes the cancer everywhere, you know. Most important what we see is the oral and the uh, airways, the laryngeal and the, uh, the gastrointestinal tract, the lung cancers. And then beyond that, you know, even to the level of the kidney, urinary bladder, all those areas, you know, this, this uh, tobacco usage is responsible for the cancers and the peripheral vascular diseases, you know, because the blood supply becomes less to the limbs and the limbs will get the ischemia. And it is also interesting to tell the people that it is not that uh, the, the person is getting affected and it goes beyond to the reproductive system, male infertility, female infertility. And if the mothers are uh, uh, smoking and then uh, there is an issues with respect to the fetus also because the fetal brain development is also uh, affected by the tobacco usage by the mothers. And in the brain, you know, a lot of cognitive issues are there. And if you uh, look into the people who have degenerated disease, early degenerated diseases, you know, Alzheimer's, early Alzheimer's sort of uh, uh, diseases, the cognition is reduced by that. So basically, uh, it encompasses all the organs of the body, if you look mm -hmm. into that. And it is not just the cancer. And what we are which not is seeing is that uh, other diseases, you know, of the lungs and the heart. Which is actually my big takeaway from our conversation, ki matlab, wo khali cancer ki photo dekh ke hum bolte ke, haa, haa, nahi, mujhe nahi hoga, ya aap dekhte nahi ho, ya usko nazar andaz kar dete ho. But what you're saying is, ki wo to sirf ek part hai. There is a whole other host of issues including things like degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's that uh, get impacted with tobacco yes, use. Yes, you are absolutely right. Jo dikhaya jata hai cancer ka hai, wo to bhoot uh, bhayanak hota hai. Isi liye it is there and it is very difficult to depict everything. Yeah. And uh, how do you depict an ischemic heart disease, pulm obstructive pulmonary diseases, infertility, you know, then you will have the entire spectrum of the medical encyclopedia there, you know, the tobacco causes everything. And the most important thing is, of course, the cancer, and that's why it is depicted on the the, uh, the products which we are using it. And on that, it is very clear that it produces cancer. There is no doubt about it. That they, but there are other diseases also, as I mm. said. So, uh, have you seen any change in trends in the last, let's say, decade or so of dealing with patients? Has there been any shift or change that you've noticed in tobacco use? You see, tobacco as such the usage was less before and it was in a different forms. The people uh, have various uh, methods of taking it, you know, which would be just a smoking of a cigarette. 
in the form of a BD or something like that. And then the direct tobacco uh, usage is also there. They keep it in the oral cavity and then the oral cancers are there which are being produced by the tobacco usage. Which is like gutka. Gutka, pan masala, all those things, you know. There were in fact uh, tobacco laced uh, toothpastes and everything, you know, those days I have seen them. I don't know now, they may not be much mm. there. But over a period of time, you see that there's a shift from uh, the smoking to the other uh, methods of uh, say nicotine, nicotine is as poisonous as smoking, you know, it has a chemical agent which has its own issues and then… Actually, most people don't understand the difference between nicotine and smoking, like for most smokers I suspect it's one and the same thing. Yes, see unfortunately we have to understand this, the uh, nicotine is the most uh, uh, notorious chemical mm -hmm. and it does reduce the blood supply to the heart, it produces the uh, and it increases the blood pressure, hypertension. So, on one side you have reduced blood supply, on the other side you have uh, hypertension which is uh, there and then, and then when you look into the other organs, you know, uh, any organ for that matter, being a pediatric surgeon I always tell to the, the mothers that you know the nicotine definitely has an issues on the fetal brain, the development of the fetal organs mm -hmm. and uh, the fetal brain development is something which is again uh, we need to tell to the uh, people. A lot of people say nicotine patches, yeah, nicotine chewing gum. Uh, you're saying they also have a downside. Yes, you know, unfortunately, very few people take the help of the doctors to quit the smoking. When they come to the doctors, some doctors, and not all of them, they might uh, prescribe uh, uh, replacement in the form of nicotine. But that is a very controlled fashion. You know, it's a therapeutic uh, method wherein they will be given with a lower doses and over a period of time under supervision with the right? various techniques. But of course, there are other drugs, you know, there's a drugs called uh, clonidine and other drugs which are far better than the nicotine. But the uh, people think that the nicotine patch is uh, uh, an alternative for the smoking, mm. which is not right because uh, nicotine is also a chemical and it is also a chemical which has deleterious effects on the uh, many parts of the body. And in fact, the smoking causes the effects through the nicotine, you know, mm -hmm. apart from the smoke. The Wrong. chemical agent which is there in the tobacco is the nicotine again. So, what about these new trends of vaping and e-cigarettes? Uh, I know a lot of people think that they are better than smoking. See, there is nothing better. You cannot say that the smoking is, uh, you know, the nicotine is better than the smoking or the, the, the newer vapors are better than this thing. Mm -hmm. This is all driven by the marketing forces, you know. If somebody say that I want to quit the smoking, if he goes to the doctor, probably he will give uh, uh, support first and then give something which is uh, non-nicotine. And if he say, thinks that, you know, the person is so addicted to the nicotine, then there will be sort of de-addiction to the nicotine, you know, that's what that will be planned, you know. It is not given as a uh, choice that, you know, the nicotine is given for uh, de-addiction. If it is not possible, the doctor, the psychiatrist or the de-addiction center, doctor, whoever is there, he will see to it that, you know, what is the best modality of the treatment for the patient to have. What is the impact that you are seeing on very young people? Because there are also reports now of kids in school who are vaping and thinking it's not as bad or it's uh, it easier. It is definitely wrong statement. It is definitely as bad as the smoking. And in fact, you know, you see what is vaping. Vaping is in addition to the nicotine, which is giving the so-called kick and the thrill, because ultimately it becomes an addiction and then dopamine is released, that the children get this pleasure of that and somebody says that, it's all conditioning, you know, somebody says that it gives the thrill, you feel the thrill, you know. And uh, in addition to that, it has chemicals, those volatile chemicals which are definitely injurious to the lungs and the airways and there are cases, you know, there is a direct lung injury and then there are serious complications out of it, you know. Any sort of uh, suggestion that you have in terms of what could be a good way to uh, do cessation of tobacco use and stop smoking because I think most people think you must ek din decide kar liya aur hum chhod denge. and for some people maybe that works but for the for most maybe it doesn't. See the first thing is that uh, we have to understand first smoking is injurious to health that we have to understand. Having known that now that commitment has to come that we should quit the smoking and if we are not in a position to quit on our own, it is better that we go to the hospital, the doctor. There are people who are specialized in this area, in the departments and the de-addiction centers, wherein they will help the people, you know, because what is happening when as an individual, as a patient, if I decide to quit, I may not be in a position to quit. 
let the doctor decide you know doctor will assess there and the doctors in the de addiction centers and then we need to tell the people even if we quit at this moment of time there are benefits of that you know that is something which is very important because uh, many people think that you know i've been smoking for ages I probably totally probably the damage is done or the damage is not done and i'm able to withstand you know cancer is not a one day job there's a gradual uh, build up of uh, a cell which is becoming abnormal and then eventually becoming cancer as cell you know so one of the things i wanted to ask you is uh, what role can healthcare providers play because chemical drug de addiction centers are common people know about them alcohol uh, sort of de addiction centers are common a lot of people don't realize ki uh, smoking ya tobacco use chhodne ke liye bhi aapke paas madad available hai yes in fact uh, there are tobacco cessation clinics in uh, most hospitals and it is not necessary that you have to go to a de addiction center or tobacco cessation clinics anybody whether it is in uh, uh, in a setting of a smaller hospital or a clinic or the bigger hospitals like this where there are dedicated de addiction centers and the tobacco cessation clinics the doctor generally speaks to the patient first and gives that strength that you know you should have this knowledge of it mm-hmm. and it is better that we quit the uh, smoking or the whatever the substance abuse we have and then uh, give a hand holding you know then we will say that you know if you are not able to take care of the so called withdrawal symptoms there are methods to take care of them for a short period of time in a very controlled fashion and it is sort of therapy you know de addiction and a therapy which is possible and the most important thing is the doctor always talks about in a holistic way you know and it needs to be reinforced as a doctor i think that the most important thing is that i should not be uh, waiting for an opportunity to tell everybody you know mm. everybody whoever comes to me you know if a pregnant mother comes to me i i i can just reinforce you know the smoking is not good for you and to your baby the fetus also and whoever is seeing the patients you know a simple a few takes few seconds a few minutes mm. to say that you know smoking is injurious to health it produces cancer it produces injury to the lungs and the heart and in any every part of the body in every organ of the body including the brain and including to your fetus and the babies you know that is very easy to say it takes few minutes suppose if somebody has come with a total uh, you know addict and addiction and then uh, wants to quit mm. then we need to have little more intense Serious therapy maybe we need in that situation a particular person who is uh, specialized in that you know otherwise every doctor every healthcare professional for that matter can have a say to say that the smoking is not good for people what kind of advice would you have to people who want to support their friends and family around who may be smokers or may have tobacco use matlab jo aap nahi istemal karte lekin aapke ghar mein koi hai ya aapke family ya friends circle mein koi hai usko support karne ke liye aap kya advice de sakte ho see it's a people movement the various forces work we are conditioned you know mm. we are conditioned because either there's a peer pressure True. somebody says that you know this is giving a kick and they go for it and then they get addicted if all the people in the society you know if the public takes it as a a challenge as a movement that let us bring an end to the smoking and the side effects of the tobacco and then they can keep talking to each other and tell everybody that it is not good there is enough scientific evidence it is not only injurious to the every organ in the body but also to our children so this is something which is very important and all of us can do why only the doctor or the institutions or the government should do this every one of us has a duty to say that this is something which is a poison it is a poison eventually it is a poison tobacco is a poison smoking is a poison nicotine is a poison smoking in any form you know alternatives like vaping is also a poison how effective do you think are these public awareness campaigns in in raising awareness of course but also impacting change or changing habits or uh, behaviors it's very important because uh, the most of the youth uh, get into this because of the peer pressure or they see here and there it could be the social media it could be the movies or it could be one of those parties where you know somebody introduces to that mm. and it is very important that uh, we uh, catch them young and then go to them and say that you know this is the knowledge which is available and this is something which we know in the medicine that this is affecting all the organs of the body and then we also say that in the event of you got into this there is a mechanisms there are enough supports for you support from the individuals supports from the family support from the institutions you know the institutions also have a l- uh, big uh, role to play and give that knowledge and the support if somebody wants to quit in an educational institution like this we have a tobacco cessation clinic where they can 
just go in there and then get the help, help of the doctors and the experts. Thank you so much for that, you know, insightful advice and suggestions. It was absolutely amazing having you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that wraps up the first episode. Thank you to Dr. Srinivas for sharing his invaluable insights on the ills of tobacco use and what we can do to help ourselves and stay smoke free and healthier. Well, we've just scratched the surface. There is so much more to come. In upcoming episodes, we'll bring more experts, more real life stories and practical advice on how you can live healthier, smoke free and tobacco free. Remember, every step towards quitting counts. And we're here to support you on that journey. See you next time.